Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe if you haven't and check out some of my other videos. I just do a bunch of like video blogs on pop culture and things that are going on in the world. And today I wanted to talk about something kind of different that I haven't really talked about before, but I genuinely just wanted to put my opinion out there on this topic, or at least my thoughts out there on this topic. And that is the current controversy around the Joe Rogan podcast on Spotify and uh, several musicians boycotting it and calls for Spotify to um, not no longer host Joe Rogan's content or filter his content on uh, their platform. Because if you don't know, Joe Rogan's podcast, which is one of the biggest podcasts in the world, um, millions and millions of listeners and huge, huge name guests have been on the show throughout its years. It's been going for a very long time, has a huge, huge draw and a huge worldwide influence. I think there's no denying that. Um, probably around a year ago now, Spotify bought the Joe Rogan experience for a huge sum. I think it was in um, about the hundreds of millions. I think it was $150 million around that ballpark, which is obviously a lot of money, which I think shows you how valuable the Joe Rogan experience is is uh to any business it, it's a it's a profit making machine so i think it was really wise for spotify to make that move in the podcast field and snap it up like that but of course that has proved a little bit problematic for them and i use the words problematic in quotations because i think problematic is used a lot these days but i think it's starting to lose a bit of its meaning and i hate to sound like a broken record um because i know a lot of people who probably look like me say this kind of thing but um again i just kind of want to put my thoughts out there about this so the current controversy is and it hasn't just recently started ever since spotify acquired the joe rogan experience and made it exclusive to their platform essentially owning that content they have received many many complaints over the types of content that have been on the show as well as the different guests that joe rogan sometimes platforms people who maybe fit into less tolerant or um you know possibly racist homophobic transphobic uh people and etc that joe rogan interviews or has as guests on his podcast um Essentially, the most recent one is that Joe Rogan has been platforming various doctors or various people who are anti-vaccine or talking about the vaccine not being effective for uh, the pandemic that is currently going on. And I, look, I'm not going to talk about whether those people are experts. Like, I'm not really interested in talking about that. I'm more interested in talking about the implications of this because the biggest story to come out of all of this is that Neil Young... Um, a musician that I honestly know nothing about either. And I, and I should also disclaim, I wouldn't say I'm a fan of the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, for full disclosure, I have listened to four episodes, I believe. Um, no, three. The one with Tony Hawk. There was one with Tom DeLonge, the lead singer of one of the lead singers of Blink-182, and Travis Barker, the drummer from Blink-182. So I am by no means a joe rogan fanatic um but what's happened is neil young the musician has said that he is removing his entire music catalog from spotify uh because of the people that joe rogan platforms and he's essentially holding spotify accountable for the content of the joe rogan podcast he is saying that joe rogan's podcast is dangerous because it spreads misinformation about uh, the pandemic and the vaccine and etc. So because of that, he's boycotting the platform. Several other musicians have um, followed suit as well and removed their content from Spotify. This is interesting to me in a lot of fronts. And as a podcaster, of course, I want to weigh in on it. And I think there's a few elements here that I think are really interesting. And I'm more interested in seeing the implications of these long term because I do agree that because Spotify owns the Joe Rogan experience, they are, I guess, responsible for the content that it puts out. They are responsible for any misinformation. They are responsible for all of that. But I also think that it's difficult for us to start being like, okay, Joe Rogan is bringing these types of guests on his show who are saying these kinds of things. And because of that, we're going to boycott and we're going to remove him uh, and we're not going to allow him to have this platform anymore. I think that's interesting and also I don't think Spotify is going to do it. It's too valuable of a commodity for them to want to relinquish it into the world. I seriously doubt they're going to do that and they'll continue to support it. Um, 
It's kind of the same thing that happened uh, around Dave Chappelle's latest comedy special, The Closer, which got a lot, which generated a lot of controversy rather for its, um, you know, trans trans content or transphobic content. Um, and uh, there was a call for Netflix to remove it and stop paying Dave Chappelle and stop giving him these specials because people objected to the kinds of content they were putting out and they went to the top, which was Netflix who was paying him. I think this is going to be a big thing moving forward, these calls to remove people from platforms, particularly if the platform owns this content and is putting it out there to the world. But I don't necessarily think or at all think that this is the right way for us to be going. First of all, there are so many podcasts out there. There are millions of podcasts out there in the world. And I think if we started dismantling every podcast where someone said something stupid or something like there are so many dumbasses out there with podcasts i genuinely mean that so i think it's hard to start filtering them out based on well we think this is the only kind of person that can be on the guest the person that says this opinion that we agree with and this is the only thing we can put out there now the counter argument there i would say is that well joe rogan is so big and he's so influential so we need to take more care of that But then I think, and I agree with that, he should be more responsive with his content. And I guess he has said that he's going to start putting disclaimers at the top of episodes that discuss the pandemic and the vaccine and other topics where people are debating certain, you know, things that could be considered misinformation. But I just think it's very difficult to go down that path of like, well, we need to remove this because it doesn't fit with this. And from what I can tell, and I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, please correct me, and I and I and I will correct myself somewhere in the comments if I if I'm wrong. But I do believe that the doctors that he's interviewed are experts. Like they just have a different opinion to the majority of other experts. But I also think it's getting to this point where it's like, well, this is how you think, and this is how the world is, and this is what the world is. And if you're not over here, then you're over here and you're the enemy and we're just going to basically get, have a war. Like, I mean, this is how war, to me, this is where war starts, where there's people over here and people over here and they won't, they won't budge. It's just like, we're here. This is what we think. This is the right way. You're over here. You're saying this and you're wrong. So we're going to do whatever we can to de-platform you and make sure you don't have a say. And and again, I'm not trying to sound like a broken record, but I do think this will be very interesting going forward. We've seen it with Dave Chappelle. We've seen it now. We're seeing it with Joe Rogan. We're in the midst of it. But I think particularly as someone who kind of sits on the center left of politics, and I very rarely talk politics on this channel, but... I think what people very far on the left don't realise is that their progressive, their extreme progressive politics aren't what everyone else thinks. So they think, well, this is how it should be. This is how everything should be. And if you're in this camp over here, you're wrong and you shouldn't have a say. But what they're not realising is that these people over here, sorry for my weird hand signals, but these people over here also think that they're right. And this is the way it should be. And if you're over here, then you're wrong. Like they don't, they just think we're right and this is what it is. And I think it it does need to be a bit more balanced. I think Joe Rogan does kind of have the right to have whoever he wants on his podcast. And I guess in a weird way, it's not his fault that he's so influential. Like it's not his fault that his podcast is the biggest podcast in the world. It just like one of them has to be and it happens to be his based on all the things he's done in terms of like building a podcast, building a community, building a brand, all of that stuff. And yeah, I, I, I don't know about the way we're going about this. And the other thing is, I think there are some people, and maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but there are some people out there that no matter what happens, they're not going to buy into the vaccine. I'm pro-vax, I've had the vax, and I think it's great and I think you should have it, but I genuinely do believe there are some people who simply will not get the vaccine, no matter what. And I also think if you're going to a podcast to get medical advice, then you're an idiot. Like, you shouldn't take medical advice from a podcast and you should... Like, everyone is responsible for their own awareness of what other people are saying and what they take in. 
if all of us are subject to this confirmation bias now, we follow people on social media who agree with us, who say the thing, same things as us, we retweet things that we agree with and we get this echo chamber of ideas, particularly on platforms like Twitter, where we just, we're constantly exposed to the same ideas and then when someone else has this idea that's objected to us, we just can't handle it. And I'm trying to deal with this a lot myself, not just in like my professional life, but in my personal life as well. And I think it's an ongoing thing we're all dealing with, but I'm just trying to get better at when someone has a different view to me, just accepting it and not being like, well, you're fundamentally wrong and I hate you and I'm against you and I don't ever want to talk to you. And, you know, all those kinds of thoughts that it seems like we very quickly jump to now. Um, Again, probably sounding like a broken record in that sense, but yeah, I, I don't know if this deplatforming thing is the right thing. And it used to be, I don't know, it, it used to kind of just be like, you don't have to watch or engage with the things you don't like. Like, again, Joe Rogan is not responsible. Well, Joe Rogan, is it's not his fault that his podcast is so popular, I guess. And anyway, all that being said, I also want to turn my attention to Neil Young. I think that it's kind of been painted as Neil Young being like this martyr or this, like, doing this valiant, brave move by removing his podcast, uh, by removing his music from Spotify. But, I mean, a couple things we need to acknowledge here. One, Neil Young was very, very big, famous, and popular back when music was as profitable as it ever was for the artist. You know, he was, he was, uh, he's a very old man. He's been in the industry for a very long time. He's probably, well, almost definitely an incredibly wealthy man makes a lot of money off his music still, makes a lot of money off royalties, probably makes a lot of money off Spotify, yes, but, you know, he was big in the age of vinyl and CDs and all of those sales, record label deals. He is a big established artist. It's not exactly a valiant move to remove your music from Spotify. I realise it's a protest from him and that's fine, but hey, encouraging other artists to do it, maybe they don't have the same privilege as that. Like a lot of other artists can't afford to take their music off Spotify, literally, because it's not as easy as a new artist or an artist outside of the realm of record label deals and physical media sales, which generated so much money back in the day. It's not as easy to just take your music off the biggest streaming platform there is. It's just simply not that easy because it's very hard for bands to make money. I'll give you an example. I found out the other day that I I have a song on Spotify. I have an album on Spotify. I've seen no money for, for it. One of the songs, the most listened to song, has 14 and a half thousand downloads. Apparently that's worth $30. So somewhere there's $30 sitting there that I that is technically mine. I don't know how to get it. I don't know when I'll get it. But that's all I've made from 14,000 streams. So you know, and, and, and when you're a small artist, every single dollar counts. So I think it's very easy for someone like Neil Young to remove his music off Spotify and, and do it as a protest. And that's fine. But I don't think it's a very brave or valiant act. When you're a very wealthy person, you can afford to make calls like that. But other artists probably can't. The other thing is he directed his uh, Twitter followers, at least. I saw a tweet from him today where he essentially said, oh, you want to hear my music? Hear it over on Amazon Prime Music. As if, like, Amazon as a company isn't as exploitative and as problematic, again in quotation marks, as a business like Spotify. Where does the line draw there for someone like Neil Young? Like, if you're going to remove your... uh, Pod, your music from Spotify on what seems to be like, you know, a political choice, then why won't you make a stand against, you know, the decisions that a company like Amazon makes? Why would you, you know, where do you draw that line? Why not remove it from all big companies? Why not create your own software? Because at least then you know that all your music is in one place, that you know how it's made and how it's distributed and that no one is being exploited along the way. Because I can probably say with certainty that people who work for Amazon are exploited somewhere on some level. The other thing is, where do we stop with something like this? Because we can look back at a lot of artists who definitely have, again, problematic lyrics, problematic content, problematic lives. Do we remove all of their music? Do we stop having access to their music on streaming services? Michael Jackson is probably a really good example of this. 
And I understand the counter there is that Spotify doesn't actually own his music. They just own the rights to be able to stream it the same way Apple Music or Amazon Music does. But I guess what I'm getting at is where does this kind of slope stop? Will we not be able to listen to Michael Jackson or even someone like Eminem or any other kind of problematic artist with lyrics that are misogynist or homophobic or racist or whatever it might be? Do these just slowly get taken down from the internet and suddenly you can't access them anymore? What is the point where we stop this? And what is the point where we go, okay, well, that's okay, but this isn't. Or this streaming service is okay, but this isn't. I think it's a big can of worms. And again, I'm not really advocating for one way or another. I don't think Spotify will remove Joe Rogan from their platform. I also don't think they should have to. And I just think that it's too valuable to them not to, which is why they're standing their ground. And I kind of think the same thing with Netflix. I think Netflix stood by Dave Chappelle and tried to kind of manage it and went into PR crisis mode because Dave Chappelle is valuable valuable to them. People like Dave Chappelle. And if people see that he has a special on Netflix, they'll come to Netflix and they'll pay for Netflix. So I think, I, I don't think we're going to see these people get cancelled or deplatformed. That's not the problem. But I do wonder how we manage this moving forward because I think it's going to become an increasingly big issue um, as time goes on. And yeah, I, I, I'm I'm really open, by the way, to, to being kind of, criticized about what I'm saying like I would like it if people if people can can say to me like hey well actually this is why it's bad and this is why he shouldn't have a platform like I'll definitely take that into account um, and I would love to hear people's thoughts on this so please comment and like and subscribe and everything like that um I really just wanted to talk about this I've I've been finding it really interesting to follow and um yeah I, I want to engage in discourse not um not arguments and harassment so yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see what people think about this. Um, thumbs up the video at the very least and uh, check out some of my other stuff. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon.